Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dante Catlett and today we're going to be talking about six tips on how to get rid of mouth herpes. Henrietta, did you mess with my teleprompter again? Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dante Catlett and today we're going to be talking about six simple tips for beginner beatboxers. One, two, three, four, five, six six tips and it doesn't even matter if you're a beginner intermediate advanced or god status these tips are for everybody who's into beatboxing because to be completely honest with you i've been beatboxing for 11 years now and as of last year i didn't even know some of these tips so let's go ahead and get into the video tip number one that i have for you and probably the most important thing when it comes to beatboxing it's just to have fun. And I know you're probably wondering, well, why do I need to have fun for, man? It's just making sound effects with your mouth, right? Wrong. I'll tell you why you want to have fun. If you're planning on taking beatboxing seriously, you're doing it as a hobby, you're just doing it to entertain people, you want to add it to your act, you have to have fun because it sounds like you want to be passionate about it. If you're not passionately having fun, you can't be passionate about something. You think that LeBron James wakes up every day is like, like, oh yeah, man, I need to get paid $150 million, but you know what? I'm not going to have fun playing this year basketball game. It's stressful. It's hard. And just like any sport, anything that you put your mind to, if you want to be an astronaut, that stuff takes hard work and dedication. I get it. It's tough, right? If you're a beginner beatboxer, your beatboxing skills might not be up to par. It might sound like broken brakes on a car. So it's like, I get it, but just have fun. Literally, you can beatbox wherever you're at. Right here in my room, on the bus, on the subway, walking through the mall, sitting on the toilet while I'm taking a dump. Sitting on the toilet. Sitting on the toilet. Now flush. It doesn't even matter because I guarantee whoever's hearing you beatboxing, they might enjoy it. You might make their day. You might be beatboxing their favorite song, or you might be sitting next to somebody who has the hottest freestyle skills. Never broke a sweat when running up the figures. Lame cats pulling muscles, trying to flex in pictures. Old bitches be in the way of some hidden figures. Some of the ugliest people I know are pretty women. Smiles hide ill intentions and hidden agendas. I can't mess with anybody who mess with pretenders. Tip number two, drink water. Lots and lots and lots of water. I don't need it. I don't need it. I need it! I cannot express how important this is and how crucial it is to drink water and to stay hydrated when you beatbox. If tea's more of your thing, or you got like some aloe vera drinks or some coconut, it's all good. Stay away from those sugary drinks like soda, stay away from coffee, it'll dry out your mouth, it'll dry out your throat. I understand, as a beginner, you're gonna be sitting there practicing all like <laughs> If you're a beginner, I highly recommend you to stay hydrated and drink water before you beatbox, while you beatbox, and guess what? after you beatbox because your throat will feel like dry sandpaper. <laughs> this is going to allow you to continue practicing and it's gonna just be a lot easier on your throat. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird, man, geez, on your throat. <laughs> like I said, if tea's more of your thing, hot water, cold water, hot tea, it's all gonna relax the throat. Uh, if you like to take hot showers, you can just sit and steam or if you have one of those steam machines, you can just have that going. What are those? Oh, if you have one of those, uh. What are those things called? Vaporizers? No. Uh. Ah, if you have a humidifier, if you take hot showers, just sit in the steam. It's relaxing for the throat. If you have a sauna at your gym, I highly recommend to do that because your throat, your mouth is one of the most important things when it comes to beatboxing, right? I mean, beatboxing is making sounds with your mouth. I mean, unless you can beatbox out the other end, then hey, more kudos to you, but don't pass me that mic. Tip number three, musicality. This might sound very strange to you, but before last year, when I went to my first music festival, which was Coachella, which by the way was amazing. If you've never been to Coachella, I highly recommend you to go. So many different genres, so many different artists in one location, amazing food. Uh, you know, the weather, I, man, 
wind i don't know you can't really plan for that because when you get there you kind of have to just deal with it you just spent like four hundred dollars on your tickets you just spent like four hundred dollars on your hotel you just spent like three hundred dollars on your outfit so you just got to kind of put up with it going there being able to hear the music from your favorite artists live feeling the vibrations gave me a sensation like no other when i was younger my cousin would always call me out we'd be in the car the radio's on listening to some cool songs i'm over here like yeah I'll put my down, down. Pit. he would hit pause because he immediately looked at me and was like bro you don't even know the lyrics and he would catch me mumbling that's just me i didn't like wasting time looking for music i don't know what it is isn't that so strange to be like you love beatboxing, but at the same time, you don't really understand music. And because of Coachella, I found music. Now, some people are born loving music, right? Music helps spark creativity. It just brings out this emotion. I can't even, I, I can't express it. I can't describe it. It's just music is magic. So for me, my tip for beginner beatboxers, musicality is the most important thing. Finding rhythms and patterns when you beatbox, understanding BPMs, which is short for beats per minute. Every song has a BPM. EDM songs are a little bit faster, whereas hip hop and R&B songs are a little bit slower, depending on the song, right? So for example, a BPM, practice hi-hats, practice your kick drums, just speed it up. What I would highly recommend to do is getting a metronome. I know a lot of apps on the phone. If you've got an iPhone or Android phone, you can download a metronome app. And a metronome is that little thing on the computer that goes. That's being able to keep up with those beats. And that's how you can become better at beatboxing if you practice with a metronome and you'll be able to balance your beats and your different sound effects with that. Again, I'll link down below. I know some metronomes that you can purchase off of Amazon. They got these cool like watch gadget gadget ones, ones you can wear around your neck. They got one you can just hold. Or again, if you don't got the money, go to the app store, download one for free, but then you're gonna have to unlock the pro version. But why is musicality important? Let's talk about that, right? Like you've got songs, hit, iconic songs by Michael Jackson, Eminem. Snoop Dogg. All of these songs have different BPMs that you have to follow. And the thing about musicality and beatboxing is like, your mouth can produce these amazing sounds. If you are a beginner, I would highly recommend you to watch other beatboxing videos. It's okay to emulate your favorite beatboxer, but don't imitate them. And what I mean by that is, watch how they perform their favorite songs, but don't copy how they do it. Throw your own twist onto it. Learn how to throw around sound effects and different verbiage, because at the end of the day, Beatboxing is just making sounds with your mouth. And it doesn't matter if you can <laughs> Tip number four for beginner beatboxers. Another important thing when it comes to beatboxing is breathing in and out. And what I would recommend for you to get your breathing patterns right. Just like when you talk, it's almost like second nature. You don't even think about that you're breathing when you're talking. You don't just go on top of the stage and just like do a speech and you're like, okay, welcome today. Uh, my name is Dante Khaled and uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy to accept this speech. Like you don't go onto the stage out of breath. I know that happens because you get butterflies in your stomach, you get all anxious, but you just have to pace yourself. So some tips on working on breathing patterns when you wake up in the morning, make sure you brush your teeth first because you don't want to be breathing next to the people next to you or even yourself and smelling that. Ooh, damn, I shouldn't eat those fish tacos. Listen to how many sound effects I can make breathing out and breathing in. So we're gonna start off with breathing in. So now we're gonna just try and exhaling. <laughs> breathing patterns are extremely crucial to beatboxing because if you're doing something like a dubstep beat or if you have the lyrics and you're trying to balance the beats in between they can be very complex and require a very very precise breathing technique pattern what i would recommend is take the time to practice your breathing techniques you can do slow breathing techniques or you can do faster breathing techniques <laughs> As you see there, you can see how you could already create beats with just breathing. This is actually one of the techniques that you would use in beatboxing if you want to talk. So that's how I would practice breathing techniques, yoga, 
exercising, running more to build your endurance for your breathing. That's how you're gonna become a better beatboxer. If you're thinking about competing against people, oh man, you better be ready because they have a lot of different rounds in which you have to compete. I'm sure you're gonna be ciphering before then, after practicing the days before, you just get better and better and better at doing it. So practice those BPMs, practice different breathing techniques and different breathing patterns. Yeah, let's go. Tip number five is sound effects. Sound effects is one of the most important things when it comes to beatboxing. Everything you're making out of your mouth is a sound effect. <laughs> Think about somebody who's building a house. They have a toolbox filled with different tools to get the job done. You got a hammer, you got a screwdriver, you got a drill, a saw. Every tool does something different, but you can always get the job done. Just depends on you and how you want to do it. So what I would recommend is practicing sound effects and don't be discouraged at all. Like I said, I've been doing this for 11 years. He's gonna blow! <laughs> that was a real burp, by the way. But that's a sound effect that you can use. What I would recommend doing is looking up different sound effects, water drips, sirens, crab scratch, zipper effects, bongo drums. There's so many different sound effects that people can make with their mouths. And I'll give you a couple of examples. This one alone took me probably four years just to do. I saw a dude in my classroom in high school. He was making this bird chirping noise, but he was doing it while breathing out. I learned how to do it while inhaling. So. So I learned the bird chirping sound effect and I was able to turn that into different things. I could do R2-D2, I can do crickets. So that's what I'm saying. Like these sound effects takes time to be able to just do it on the spot. Don't get discouraged if you can't do it right away. Just keep practicing, keep practicing. Before to do the water drip, I had to click my finger on my, my cheek, but now, I can just do it on command, right? Or I can do like the electric guitar. I was so discouraged, I thought that I couldn't do the siren. But the thing is, everybody has different vocal ranges. Everybody has different mouth shapes, which means that everyone can make different sound effects with their mouths. You might not be able to do what D'Lo can produce with his mouth. But I'm sure if you practice, you might be able to do it and you might be able to make different sound effects. I know a lot of people that can whistle to save their lives, but I guarantee you if you practice and you put your mind to it, mind over matter, you can make it happen. And that is exactly why sound effects is so important for when you are beatboxing because you want to challenge yourself. You want to add different sound effects. If you're doing dubstep, dubstep has so many different sound effect variations that you can add in there. That's what makes you stand out and makes you unique in the beatboxing community. <laughs> And before we get into the last and most important tip when it comes to beatboxing, go ahead and smash that like button if you guys are enjoying this video. Comment down below what you guys think about this video. And if you are a beginner or if you're advanced and you have tips for beginners, leave them in the comment section down below. I will make sure to get back to every single person in the comment section and give you guys a like back as well. I love talking to you guys and I appreciate you guys taking your time to watch these videos. You know, I haven't been the most consistent when it comes to beatboxing videos, but what I can see from watching my old YouTube videos is that so many of you care about learning about beatboxing and there isn't enough quality content out there. So I want to keep giving you guys that quality content and that value so that you can learn how to beatbox. And if this is your first time watching my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on your post notifications by hitting that little bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video so you don't miss any of my content. Thank you guys so much. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the last tip. Practice and be patient. Now I know a lot of you are like, wow, really? Really, was that really the last tip is just to practice and be patient? It's actually really important because for me doing this for such a long time, I wasn't patient. I wasn't practicing all the time. And when you do practice and you put your mind to it in at least an hour a day, my thing is you can practice anywhere, literally anywhere. I practice the most in my shower or while I'm in the bathroom because it has the best reverb, the best echo, and nobody can hear me and nobody can judge me on what I'm doing. But at the same time, dude, I beatbox everywhere. I'm behind people all the time. I'm in line at Disneyland, like, People are like, whoa, I didn't know Haunted Mansion had bird sound effects like this. Where's that bird coming from? Like, that's the funniest thing to me when I get people like that. And it just sparks conversations. Like, a lot of you guys have to remember, like, we are human beings. It's a crazy world we live in today. But at the same time, 
Talking to people, having that human connection is the most important thing and you never know who that person is and what they do. They might be a rapper. They might want to bust the flow. Come on, come on, yeah. Yo, my name is Dante Catlett. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was six tips. Six tips for beginner beatboxers. If you guys have any questions, again, make sure to leave them down in the comment section down below. I truly appreciate you guys tuning in and watching this video. Till next time, I'm out.